Holy Spirit. Or you can just release words through your mouth. Or you can just, even just in your heart, just release the anointing on people by faith. I've done that many times before. I just sit beside people. I'm talking with them on a personal to personal. They're telling me all their problems and how they're oppressed. I can feel the oppression. I can, and their problems are real. But I'm consciously, I know where I'm seated in heavenly places above those problems and above that darkness. So I'm standing above them, pouring oil down back down to the earth. And I could feel the anointing oil just melting those problems and those oppressions off of them. And then I'm like, how do you feel now? And I feel a lot better. Well, the anointing breaks the oath. Just release the anointing by faith. Whatever way God wants to. If you're to walk on the water, then walk on the water. If you're just to like just release the anointing from above where you're seated by faith without even telling anyone, then do that. It's, you are seated there. You do have the keys of the kingdom now. Just go unlock all those prison doors. Sometimes it's just worship. Sometimes it's just doing nothing but laying on your bed, meditating on God with your all your thoughts and heart, all your affections in your mind. Man, it feels good in here. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit of truth just pierce your heart so that you can go deeper through that piercing of the heart of the hallway that God has made into your heart through His sword by the living Word of God. And you could just latch on to that. Just go deeper and deeper into the kingdom of heaven to be alone with Him. Because what's, what's shown in secret will be shouted from the rooftops or whatever that scripture, whatever. <laughs> oh. John got close enough to Jesus to just feel the rhythm of his heart. And then he released the rhythm of his heart called the book of Revelation. Whoever's thirsty, come. Whoever's hungry, you know. <laughs> Freely you have received, freely come. You know, this whole gospel is so simple. It's the gospel of the new covenant. It's the drink. Just drink his blood. It's something you just take in. Oh, my faith. Why do we do this sometimes? Sometimes it's just this. Sometimes it's just this. Sometimes it's not any outward thing. It's, it's just an inward act of drinking in the manifest presence of God. And then what goes in will come out if you allow him. All right, we're done here. Uh, yeah, follow the voice of God more than the voice of the accuser and you will have a better life. <laughs> follow God right into glory. Oh. But beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Shabbat. That's been underlined. I don't know if you can see it. Right there, somewhere around there, whatever. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Maybe the Lord will allow us to interpret it. Because the Bible says to interpret. You know, whoever prays in an unknown tongue, let him pray also that he may interpret. So let's try it right now. May as well. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you for the interpretation of tongues. And uh, because I want to be edified and I want to edify your body. He said, greater is he who, uh, Shabba. Greater is he who interprets the tongues and prays in tongues because he interprets in the Shabba. Shabba Tarasi Kishi. I just see tentacles coming off like an octopus trying to choke the life out of you. When you pray in tongues, your words are like swords coming out of your very being a double-edged sword god's word in your mouth coming out cutting those tentacles off that's choking the life of god it's trying to choke it's like a choking spirit but you're when you pray in tongues you build yourself up you're strengthening with might in the inner man to break those tentacles off 
<laughs> the other thing I'm seeing is like a lot of you are like birds you're in a cage but as I was praying in tongues I just saw the white holiness of God erasing the cage because you were born to fly <laughs> hallelujah if you're in some kind of prison pray in the Holy Ghost sing songs to the Lord the prison door bar the prison doors I can't even talk hallelujah the prison doors just may fling wide open and other as other prisoners hear you and they will get free too it is for freedom the Christ has said it's free and where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom pray in the Holy Ghost he's our freedom Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, what were we doing? <laughs> Shava. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Verse 21 of Jude. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Let's do that. Let's obey the scripture. Why do we just read this like a newspaper without actually entering into what it actually says? Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, have compassion, making a difference. And others, saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. God is love. Keep yourself in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in Jesus Christ. Keep yourself in the Father, in the awareness. Keep yourself in that realm by singing songs, spiritual songs, giving praise, manifesting His name, praying. Always building yourselves up in the Holy Ghost. Building yourselves up in the Holy Faith. Honestly, when I started this video, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> Just keep on, but let, let's just do what the scriptures say. Like, why not? Like, why, let's just build our, let's keep ourselves in love. A lot of people have theology, which is death, the knowledge of good and evil, knowledge of something. But the tree of life is experience. You actually taste the fruit. Life is way better than knowledge because life is experience. Knowledge is about something you can just you can read about something and you can have all these degrees and you try to learn how to cast out a devil like this is how you do it and you read all about it you know all the steps but you've never cast out a devil you have zero experience in it and then when you're confronted with the devil you have all the knowledge but you fail because you did not realize it was the anointing that breaks the yoke <laughs> and that comes through a relationship with God you don't cast out devils through knowledge. They're actually the most knowledgeable than you. They're more they have, they're professionals of the knowledge of good and evil. Come on. <laughs> the Pharisees in the Old Testament memorized the scriptures and they could they could beat anyone in any theological debate. But it was life. It's only life that sets them free. It's the it's the revelation of God. <laughs> Tasting him and seeing. I mean, last week after worship, uh, God, like, I was just doing nothing, man. I just finished doing some worship, and he stuffed honey in my mouth. That realm felt so good. Still to this day, I'm like, man, I, I don't even understand why, why he did that. <laughs> I guess he just wanted to enlighten my eyes <laughs> to let me know how kind and how good he is. Just because I took a little bit of time out of my busy video game schedule <laughs> to just worship God in spirit and truth because the scriptures say that. That's what the Father searches for. That's what he loves. He told me personally, this is, I love this place. And I was looking around at the church building. He was looking at the hearts that were in Christ. Just surrendered worship. Whoa, there he is. Wow. 
<laughs> you know? God loves that place. <laughs> I was looking at the buildings, the cross, and the, the pipe organ thing. And everyone, and you know, and God said to me, I love this place. And I looked closer, and it was the tears rolling down people's faces. They were just surrendered worship. I think that's one of God's favorite places is where he can meet with his children who surrender their heart and their mind and their body and everything in adoration towards him so he can flood them with life. It's one thing to have, get flooded with knowledge by reading about him. It's another thing when a tidal wave of his presence comes crashing through your heart and your mind and your flesh. Evidence that you're even in the faith is the substance of making the invisible visible. What was that? Here, I'll just read this. Here, if you go back to the beginning of Jude, I just opened this up randomly today. Here, let's go to verse verse 3. Actually, let's read it from right from the very first verse. Jude, the servant. There's a key right there. Are we servants or are we trying to like boss Jesus around? A servant takes orders and obeys. Come on. They know the secrets, according to John chapter 2. This Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, he was actually his brother. He could have said Jude, <laughs> Jesus Christ's brother, <laughs> but he said the servant. And brother of James. Oh, and brother of James. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied who wants that anointing who wants the peace of God that passes all understanding to be multiplied in you so that all you can do is just lay on the floor and let, let the slobber just roll out of your mouth as you're just intoxicated on the bliss of God you found a love that's stronger than death. You found a love that just surpasses understanding, surpasses knowledge. Everything you've ever learned about God just goes poof. It's like, wow, you're face to face with God, even if you don't see his face. You know it's God, and no one can convince you otherwise. That kind of peace being multiplied. <laughs> Hallelujah. And love be multiplied. The love of God. Come on. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. See, a religious mind will say, well, you need to contend for the doctrine. <laughs> That's not what he said. Contend for the faith. And we know that the faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. What is this faith you're talking about? Well, it's the, it's the, it's the doctrine that I learned in the theological cemetery. <laughs> Not quite. Let's go to... Let's just hop around in the Bible. I haven't done this in a long time. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's see what faith is. Hebrews chapter 11 says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Where's the evidence of things not seen? You need to contend for that faith that makes unseen things seen. <laughs> it, you have evidence. Whereas, when, when you walk by somebody... Do they get healed by the overshadowing of the Almighty God? <laughs> when you talk to someone, does the presence of God show up and they just get flush with peace? Is the love of God multiplied through your life, like that hidden talent in your heart, into their life? Contend for the faith. It's not for the doctrine about something. That's the knowledge of good and evil. That thing, pff, it's the tree of life. When you take a fruit from that tree of life, you eat it, you receive the patience. You take a bite of that fruit, oh, you get hit with the love of God, passes knowledge. When I was 
in this dream one time and I had to face a giant. I had all these different weapons around me, but there was only one weapon that I had need of. It was mighty through God and pulling down of this stronghold that I was dealing with in my life. I had all I saw all these ball barbaric weapons, like there were swords, bats with spikes and you know, just daggers, all these primitive weapons like nunchucks and stuff like that on two tables along this hallway. And I had like a little sword and I kept walking and then I ran into this giant just fear struck me and then I looked over to my left or my right I can't remember there's a ladder and I began climbing this ladder and at the top of the ladder there's a glowing man up there and I recognized him no one had to tell me it was David it was King David and wow he deals with giants <laughs> I said David I need the anointing that you had when you walked the earth and then I kept climbing up to get towards him and he stuck out his hand and touched me and went boom and faith entered me not just the knowledge of faith, <laughs> the substance, the evidence. It was the evidence of things not seen. It was the evidence entered me. It was like a substance. The things that I was hoping for to def defeat this giant. So I'm like, just courage, faith. Like I'm just going to go down and destroy this giant. 14 feet tall, he's missing plates of armor, and he's had this dark complexion and this cloud of fear around him. And I run down the ladder, just caked with faith, and then I step into this presence, this, this, this dark realm of this giant, and I'm ready to rip his head off. Just thrust him through with my little dagger that I had. It was the sword of the spirit. That's how, that's how built up I was in the holy faith back then. I didn't know how to use the word of God very accurate, but it was enough to kill a giant. And I stepped down there, boom, instantly that fear struck me. But since faith was in me, I recognized something. That fear, it wasn't me fearing him. He had a spirit of fear. God's not given us a spirit of faith, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Mind of Christ. Love of God. Power of God. The anointing breaks the yoke. He's anointed you to break yokes because you've been broken free in him. So you can go out and set, you know, whoever set the captives free. Do the works of Jesus Christ. And so I cut down, I step down this ladder and I step into this darkness and I feel the fear of this and I instantly recognize it was not coming from me. It was not me. It was him. He had a spirit of fear. He was terrified of the faith that entered my heart. Just by, by experience. And then I just went to go leap towards him and cut his head off. And I woke up. But behind the door, before I leaped towards him, I recognized there was a door behind this giant blocking the door. It was the door to my destiny. It was, it was the door of walking with God. He's the door. <laughs> if there's anything blocking you from God, just take the authority, step up by faith, cut off that giant's head. I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning of, the, of this video, I said, but uh, I had a, I was reading the children's Bible with my with my daughter the other day, and uh, and it talked about how Noah, like the the boat lifted up and buried the mountains. All the mountains were buried in the waters, so that Noah was above it. The mountains of the earth were underneath Noah's feet. by those waters that came from the deep within and from the heavens above. And instantly I had the understanding, wow, that's like the washing water of the word. We can speak to this mountain to be cast out into the sea. <laughs> and it shall obey you. If you have faith, if you believe in your heart, <clears throat> you may, it may be, it probably will be done literally for everyone to see in the natural but there's also so many different layers to revelation. When God speaks, it's multiple tiers of understanding. Do you have a mountain block in your heavenly vision? Is there a giant block in your door of destiny? Speak the word of God. You may not even feel anything right away. You may not feel courage, feel faith, but you keep on being diligent and speaking, just chipping away. It's just like that octopus 
just taking the dagger of truth, just cutting off another tentacle. Like, well, I prayed for like two hours last night. Pray for another two hours. Cut off another tentacle. <clears throat> Only six more to go. I prayed for a week straight, every day, nothing. Take one more. Who knows? Maybe this is the last one. Just bam! Then that thing just falls off. And you're free. Never give up hope. Uh, and so, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. Contend for that faith. It's the faith that brings the evidence of the invisible realm. I mean, man, it's it's awesome to see an angel. Like, I, I really enjoy that. I don't worship angels. I worship Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, my Father. I worship God. And uh, But when they show up, they carry his presence. They carry these dimensions. Like, we have guardian angels, right? I would I treat angels basically like I would treat a pastor or a prophet or an evangelist or, you know... Or my brother, because like there's they're like servants, ministers to the heirs of salvation. They're they, they're here to serve the sons of God. They perform His word. So when you speak the scriptures, what are you speaking? Especially the words of Jesus Christ. Angels will back up that word. Hallelujah! You just keep speaking the word of God. It's decreeing. Make righteous decrees. It's from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. People are making decrees. God told uh, one of the prophets, like, make a rampart, do it this way, and then do all these prophetic acts. Man, one time I was in a worship service. There was, there was nothing happening, just a little bit of peace. And, uh, and the scripture comes to me. These men turn the world upside down. And I'm like, man... I think our problem here is there's no breakthrough right now, and we're in the midst of this worship, so you know, worship service, and the, the anointing is just very, very distant. So I, by faith, I just heard a scripture: these men turn the world upside down. Well, what do I do, God? Do I stand up and preach? <laughs> no, I'm going to turn the world upside down just by faith. I'm just going to be like a little child and just experiment. So I grab the meeting. In my imagination, or in my just have my eyes closed, and I just picture, I just grabbed the meeting where we were all worshiping, I just flipped it upside down. And instantly, as I stepped out and did that tiny little act, the presence of God just came like a tidal wave of peace. Went from like a maybe a half of a one to about a nine, just snug. Tears and drool just came out of my mouth as I was just in awe and wonder at how good God is. How you want to turn the world upside down? You gotta just, you gotta step out in faith sometimes. You gotta be like a child. You gotta step out. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to make mistakes. That's where you learn. Okay, well that didn't work. <laughs> Maybe I'll try this, and then then you find out like you hear something from God and you just. Obey the best of your ability, and then God actually shows up and booms you. <laughs> I used to always deal with these like demon possessed people. I did not know how to deal with them on the buses. They're raging, and I can feel the demons from two blocks apart, like two blocks before they get near me. And I would always ask God, "What do we want to do? What, what should I do?" I pray in tongues silently. It didn't work. That didn't work. I don't know. Maybe it works for you. It didn't work for me. Uh, try to theologically encounter them and try to win them to Jesus <laughs> didn't work. Uh, and then one day I was like, this guy's yelled, scream. I've, you know, I've told this a thousand times and it's so powerful. Screaming at these girls, love your mother. And then they were scared and I was like, God, this guy's irritating. I feel the, I feel the demon. What do you want to do about this? Like this demon of rage. And, uh, and the presence of God came for one second. Tell him I love him. And the presence of God left. I only do what I see my father doing. I only say what I hear my father saying. That's what, that's, that was the way Jesus operated. He was teaching me how to operate in the supernatural. But fear struck me. Do I step out and believe Jesus, that presence of God that I felt for one second... Or do I give in to the fear that thinking that he could stab me, he could punch me in the face, knock me out, and just break my neck and kill me? 
and I wrestled that, like, is this even God? Like, I don't know, I felt the presence, but it could be God. And, you know, tell him I love him. Well, tell him I love him. Why does it sound like that? If it was God, I should say. If it was me, I would have said, tell, I'll tell this guy that I said that God loves him. But, you know, tell him I love him. So I'm wrestling with all these thoughts and unbelief, and I'm like, well, but I gotta obey God. And then I see the guy getting off the sky train. So I jump up. I'm gonna. I just choose to step through my fears and obey God. I choose to leap through the giant through my door of destiny. And I, I walk up to the man. I put my hand on his shoulder, and I, he turns around with tears jet stream down his cheeks, and I said, "Sir, Jesus says that He loves you." And he said, when you, did, when you touched me, when you said that, it was like an angel came here. I said, well, that's Jesus Christ. And he says that he loves you. And you need to get born again now. Because this is evidence of the things unseen. I didn't say it's evidence of the things unseen. But I'm just saying. It was the substance of things hoped for and had evidence of the things unseen on his face. He had an encounter with the living God. And he did get born again. I, I led him to Jesus and I bought him a meal and we sat there and talked about the kingdom the best that, to my ability at this time. What are you saying, Chris? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God spoke to me. I stepped out and obeyed the word of God and I saw the substance of the thing that I was hoping for. The demon got cast out because perfect love casts out fear. Because where fear is, there's torment. First of perfect love cast a fear out of me first of all that was being projected from this demon in this guy and perfect love cast the fear out of that man so that he could receive perfect love into his heart in mind in soul and body and he got and he got saved so let's just keep reading this now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are not made of things what? So that things which are seen are made of things which do which do appear. Let me read that again. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Anyways, that just tells me that. What you see in the natural, what's going on, is everything's been being manipulated by things unseen. The way people think, the way people talk, the way people express themselves, it's either motivated by the unseen realm, like the, the, the demons, by their spirit, what they've been taught by demons, or by God, or by the angelic realm. It's by Satan, demons, a, a, a soul in their spirit or by angels or by God there's like we're always being influenced by the invisible realm whether we believe that or not I constantly feel stuff from my neighbors I constantly feel things through believers like they're walking in this anointing all oh, they're walking wow they had a heavy prayer life because they're full of the Holy Spirit they don't have to tell me one time there was this this pat well it wasn't even I knew I knew he was a minister of the gospel. He didn't have to tell me, but he got demoted because he told me in pride. Um, like the way he was talking like that, and he said, like, yeah, I'm also a minister of the gospel. Like he, I knew him for a few days before this. And I said, I know. <laughs> you don't have to, like, when you walk in the Holy Ghost, you don't really need people to explain things because everything is wide open to the eyes of him who's spirit you've been baptized into who you're one spirit with you see through his eyes and uh, you deal with problems according to the wisdom that he's given you and the understanding I mean it's pretty obvious like everyone deals with things like I deal with stuff like whoa, what was that anyways yeah I'm gonna keep this quick I'm gonna I gotta go answer that it might be important uh, um, here, let's just finish this off. These all died in faith. These are the people who walk with God. Verse uh, 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So they confessed. <laughs> what I'm saying is, man, just if you don't feel anything right away, 
just keep hacking away at the tentacles. If you don't feel anything right, keep praying, keep pressing in, keep pursuing God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And who knows, maybe the honey will splat in your mouth. The tentacles will come off. The birdcage will get erased. Just step out in faith, even if you're wrong. God will honor you for stepping out in faith like a child. You might even get an awesome rebuke like I did. God rebuked me in heaven, but it was like a life-changing rebuke in unconditional love that changed my perspective of all of humanity. I realized, man, God doesn't change. He is love. And the only thing blocking us from receiving His love is the veil that Satan puts over our hearts and minds. Hearts and minds. <laughs> <laughs> but that veil is taken away in Christ. Come on. Let's just pursue God to eat from the fruit of the tree of life. And just like take all the knowledge. Say, God, I give you this. Take all the knowledge that I've ever learned about you. God, I choose to receive the love of God that passes all understanding. Please grant me, God, the love of God that passes all understanding. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my body, and I give you my time. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Stay in the gospel. It's the good news of Jesus Christ, not the bad news of the Antichrist. <laughs> I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not me. It's Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. To be with him in the glory. <laughs> I remember my friend was over in one area of the building, and I was in another area of the building, and I was in a realm of a different dimension in that area, the area of the building. Can we talk about that? Shh. Eat your supper. And as I was reading that scripture, I had an experience with. God. You know, I, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of. Some people, some translations say I live by the faith in, by faith in the Son of God. But I was, I saw it by the, like the faith of the Son of God, is a lot different than having faith in the Son of God because it's actually His faith that holds the planets, the universe. The molecules in my body together and it's his faith that pulled me into heavenly places in Christ he was he was rejoicing at the joy set before him and he stepped into it by faith believing you know that's he set the standard Jesus set the standard of what it is to be a Christian it's to be Christ it's like you die and it's no longer you living anywhere but Christ living through you and it just starts right there. Mm, keep eating. I, I scooped you. All right. <laughs> okay, scarf that food down, man. You want to go big and strong? You better scarf down the lamb. <laughs> Unless you eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood, you don't have any life in you. Because <laughs> human life is fallen. Because of the curse that Adam and Eve entered into by sinning, by disobeying God and believing the devil, we have to die now because humanity is full of sin. Jesus wouldn't even submit to when he came to like what holy cow man. When Jesus walked on the earth, they wanted to make him a king, but he didn't you know, pay any attention to that because he knew what was in them. And what was in them was that sinful nature that he came to destroy by his precious blood and by his faith. By going to the cross and then sucking us up into heavenly places. Being born again from above, not from below. Born again, you mean that's like a brand new life? You're a new creature in Christ and the old things have passed away? So you're not merely a human being anymore, but you're a spirit being, alive with the life of God that you've traded. You've traded your life for the life of God. It's way better. 
Well, I think that's good news. That it's nothing we have to strive for, nothing we have to, you know, work for. The only thing that we do is we die with Him on the cross, and He raises us up in the heavenly places in Him as we give our lives to Him. If we just believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, we are saved. And that salvation is not just hell insurance or you know fire insurance. Salvation is something that works its way outward. You work your salvation out with fear and trembling. It's like it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. But then as you allow him to st- destroy your fallen nature, destroy the works of the flesh, he works through you. That's, those are called living works. And he starts projecting himself into the world through you, his body. And it becomes evident that you really are the body of Christ because Christ is manifesting through you. And it's not your works, it's what the Spirit wants to do because the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God and they hear the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God says something that he wants to do, you just obey and you see power manifest anyway so uh, I was just I don't know <laughs> I just pressed record for a random video I haven't uploaded a video in a long time and so I just thought I would just open my mouth and by faith let the Lord fill it because <laughs> he promised okay go wash your hands then open your mouth and I will fill it with honey from the rock which is revelatory insight and uh I didn't know what I was going to say, but here we are. Thank you, Lord. Uh, There's some things zooming around in my spirit that I'd like to talk about. One of them is faith. And it's not like our faith. It's the faith of God. You know, the, the, the faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. Oh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Because faith, now, the faith now faith is the substance of things hoped for now faith (laughs) you know faith is the substance it's his faith coming through you as you yield to him it's not trying to conjure up something it's just it's dying yourself and submitting yourself to his faith to his works and uh the easiest way to describe it is like sometimes you'll get God will show you something you'll get an impression or you'll feel like uh, the spirit of God or you'll see in a vision like they did in the Bible you know or you'll hear of the voice of the Lord <laughs> God, yes God still speaks today he didn't die <laughs> he speaks through us he speaks through nature he speaks through every every form it's always the spirit though that's why he, Jesus said, even after he ascended, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And also, and again, my sheep hear my voice. You know, if we hear his voice, that means his voice is spirit. We need to hear his voice. If we don't hear his voice, then we're bastards. Yeah, you need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Because it's real. God is real. I don't hear the voice of God like every day audibly or visions and revelations yet. But, you know, the pure in heart see God so you can see what he's doing. And if, when you're truly his sheep, you, you can hear what he's saying by the Spirit. And it's not always by the King James Bible. Sometimes it's through any means possible that he wants to speak if he wants to speak through a donkey like he did in the Old Testament then he'll speak through an animal if he wants to speak through like a a Pharisee he'll speak through a Pharisee if he wants to speak through me he'll speak through me if he wants to speak to me through any means through a child he'll speak to me but the point is that God still speaks and we need to hear his voice hallelujah totally lost track of what I was going to talk about oh yeah faith the substance. How do you know that God's speaking to you? Because the substance of the Spirit of God will be in those words. Um, I'm trying to think of, you know, once I was just on a sky train and I was going to go to my friend's place. I said this testimony before, but and uh, 
I called him up and I was like, hey man, let's get together and worship God. And he, he didn't know if it was the will of God. I said, like, like, I just wanted to like smack him in the head. Like, what do you mean? It's not the, read the Bible. God's seeking worshipers who will worship him in spirit and truth. Of course it's the will of God. You know, what are you going to do? Like, you know, <laughs> play video games? <laughs> That's the will of God more than worshiping? <laughs> So uh, finally we did some calls back and forth and we ended up going to my other friend's house and meeting there and then I ended up on the train I just, I just went into a vision I'm like God what do you want to do tonight I have my eyes closed and I'm looking I'm just searching for God for the presence of God because I've been in the presence through worship but I know what the presence of God feels like and then uh, you know I'm just searching for him and then just in my imagination I see myself washing but the presence of God shows up with my imagination, with with anointed thoughts, the mind of Christ, you know, mind of Christ. So the Lord is revealing something by his mind, his desires, what he wants to do. And it was just a, a big silver, you know, salad bowl. And I was washing my friend's feet who I had like some stuff in my heart against at the time. <clears throat> and uh, God wanted to humble me so that I would serve him. And uh, it was really powerful. So I just saw that on the sky track. I got really excited. I didn't even know he had a silver salad bowl. And uh, by the time I got to his house, I went to grab him. I asked him, where's the silver salad bowl? And I didn't even know that he had a silver salad bowl. And he told me where it was. I grabbed it and I filled it with water. And all the people came over and I began washing their feet. And then they wanted to wash my feet. Everyone wanted to wash each other's feet because the presence of God manifested. And as we were, wa everyone's washing each other's feet and being humbled, you know, <laughs> Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord doesn't mean you, you beat yourself up with condemnation. That's not humility. That's a demon. That's false humility. That's that's being demon possessed and obeying the devil. I'll be there in a bit. <laughs> True humility is full dependence upon God. So I was like, I saw what God wanted me to do in a vision that had the presence of God in it. And then when I got there, I had faith that God was going to do something. Because there was substance as I saw that picture, as I saw what I was supposed to do. And then I grabbed the bowl. And then as soon as I did, that presence of God just flooded through the place. We began washing this guy's feet. And uh, and we began just, the Spirit of God showed up in such a powerful way that a glory realm showed up. That I don't think we've ever stepped into that level or that dimension since that time years ago. Where we, anything we would talk about, it would just a realm would open up, and understanding would open up. That you know, we're talking about time, and you know how time is relative, and so we're not even scientists, man. We don't even know what that stuff means, and uh, how that you know, all things are possible to those who believe right now. I mean, like right now, we're in a different dimension. We're in Christ in heavenly places. You can feel that realm. Yeah, okay, that's where we are sitting right now. We're not just human beings. We're born again, born from above, and it feels good up here, the air is nice and clear, and, and but it was, it was powerful, like, we were all, and one of the young kids, uh, he's like, whoa, God is talking to us, and it was just because the Spirit of God manifested, it was the substance of things that we were hoping for, we wanted more of God, you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, you're doing it before Him, and He will exalt you, not just you, but those around you, <laughs> There was a realm. We all got caught up in the glory. So it wasn't anything that I conjured up. It wasn't something me trying to conjure, like a vision. I was looking for God. I was like sincere. I didn't even know he was going to show me anything. I was like, just said, God, like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want? To, what should we do tonight? Like, I'm thinking like maybe songs. Uh, I don't have no idea. I don't have an agenda. I just want to know what God wants to do. And so it was. He infused a substance and a blueprint of what I was to do and when I did it power was released that opened up a dimension in the glory that everyone could enter into and it was marvelous we entered into the glory whoa hi scared me yeah I'm just making a video right now talking about faith and the substance of things hoped for has God taught you anything about faith do you remember? I'm putting me on the spot. Putting you on the spot. Yeah. Jasmine just got raptured from the dinner table into her room. <laughs> but it wasn't the Lord. <laughs> yeah. 
it was a man-made doctrine. <laughs> it sucked her in her room. Anyway. <laughs> Let's say what word? I didn't say nothing. You better repent for the kingdom is heaven's at hand. All right. Anyways. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, oh, I lost my train of thought again. We need the train and the glory just to wash through us. God, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and the knowledge of you. And as we talk, those realms open up through our spirit, through our minds, through our bodies. Let the spirit of understanding come and just rapture us, God. Just rapture us back into reality in Jesus' name. She could have both so say. And uh, yeah, false faith is when you try to do something in your own strength, like dragging people out of wheelchairs and, and then commanding them to get healed where God hasn't really even told you to do that. It's just like you're stepping out with zeal. I've done that. And a lot of them didn't get healed. And uh, I was trying to do it out of zeal without knowledge, revelation knowledge. And I didn't see the power manifest. And I was kind of, it bothered me why the people did not get healed. Because it's, I saw in the Bible that Jesus healed people. So I stepped out in faith and they didn't get healed. But I thought I was stepping out in faith. I was stepping out in assumption. Because faith is the substance, you know, that substance of God. <laughs> it's His faith coming through your mouth or your actions, what He showed you. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. I only say what I hear my Father saying. And it's the same thing with me. I saw my Father show me what He wanted me to do, and I did it. And there was power released. And I didn't hear Him say, well, I want you to go. Oh. Because it's relational. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you don't, hearing is another word for getting close to putting your ear against the heartbeat of Jesus, so you can hear. <laughs> and uh, it's, there's no assumption involved whatsoever. It's just like you hear the heartbeat of God. You hear the rhythm of heaven, and then you can just flow with that. Let me grab some water. Jesus would see who the 12 disciples are because he went up into the mountain and he would pray all night and then he'd come back and he knew who they were just through because he was spiritual. He didn't he didn't Google on the internet who the disciples were supposed to be. <laughs> he had a relationship with his father. And the same thing with Noah. Noah didn't conjure up, I'm gonna build myself a I'm gonna build a boat, even though it's never rained before. He built a boat. It brought salvation, basically, as a foreshadow of Jesus that is were to be in the Ark of Christ. He built the boat according to the plans of God. And he saved his entire family, his entire family, and all the animals, which is symbolic of Jesus coming. And he saved his brothers and his sisters, and even the, the, the beast-natured Christians, if they will just eat him, if they will just come into the Ark... All they have to do is hear his voice. It was it was God who led the animals into the ark. So that means that the animals could hear his voice. So even the beast nature Christians have a chance to enter into Christ through hearing his voice, which is relationship. It's not a relationship with the King James Bible or a relationship with your denomination. Whatever. <clears throat> you know, the Apostle Paul didn't have the King James. <laughs> All they had was Holy Spirit, and that was enough to do, like just destroy works of the devil everywhere they went. But the whole point of that was to hear. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing is symbolic. Speaks to me of be, having a relationship with one. That means your intent to put your ear to something, to put your attention towards something, so that you can hear. I mean, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. That's one thing to see. It's another thing to hear, to have ears to hear. Be sharpened in the spirit. You know, you allow the word of God to cut your heart so you can actually discern sharper, more tender. Uh, Holy Spirit, put the blood of Jesus on those people. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, faith 
comes by hearing and hearing his voice. A, ne- a really good example of that is just Jesus in the boat, or Jesus actually walking the water, and Peter was in in the boat, and Peter said, you know, to Jesus, you know, if that's really you, because he, he had a little bit of struggling of unbelief. So how do you come to calm that unbelief? You walk in faith, right? <laughs> Religion will teach you unbelief, so you fight the gifts of the spirit, but relationship will infuse you with faith so you destroy the works of unbelief and religion Jesus was on the water he was walking in faith (laughs) above the storms of life and then in the boat Peter says Lord if that's you bid me word give me word faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God give me word to come unto you on the water and Jesus gave the word he said come So that very word held Peter above the storms of life. That very word infused faith into Peter so he had enough faith to step out and walk on the water, which he has never done before. It's never even been heard of before, except for late in the Old Testament, Elisha took the mantle and he smacked the water and it split open because he saw Elijah do it, I think. Yeah. So... His faith came by hearing the word of God, and he stepped out in faith. But the thing is, like if we walk by, like if we uh, live in the spirit, let's also walk in the spirit, the spirit of faith as well. Like it's one thing to have an encounter with God, but then you don't do anything with it. You just think it's wow, it feels. I feel goosebumps, and but you don't step out. You have a vision of seeing the salad bowl and uh, washing people's feet, but you don't actually go and wash people's feet. I stepped out and I did something and it released power. Peter stepped out of the boat and it, and it released. He walked on the water. He was the only disciple to walk on the water with Jesus. That's been recorded. And uh, and then he, yeah, we, we, we know the story of how he took his eyes off of Jesus and looked at the, the natural realm and the, the faith, he, like just kind of, he sank back into the natural realm. By taking his eyes off the author and finisher of his faith, but the whole point of that uh, Bible story is to like to re- it was faith that came through the Word of God, and Peter had an, a relationship with him, so he recognized the spirit of faith that came through Jesus. Because earlier in the in the Gospels, Peter was with Jesus in the boat again. Jesus like said, "Cast." Uh, no, yeah, he started preaching and stuff like that, and in the boat. And then Peter was sitting with Jesus in the boat, and then he saw all the fish that was being counted or something like that. I got my brain all mixed up right now. But and then Peter said to Jesus, "Depart from me, for I am a sinful man." And and Jesus started speaking to him. He's like, "From this day forward, you're going to catch men." And that fear of the Lord, that spirit. He, his, he had a revelation of Jesus being the Christ. He had a revelation of holiness, what holiness is, and it exposed the folly in his own heart. So he had an ex, there was a spiritual substance that made Peter afraid. You know, the spirit of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. wisdom. There, he had an experience with Jesus in the boat that he recognized, okay, well, that's the word of the Lord. When Jesus talks, there's a substance that comes. So he's like, If that's really you, Jesus, give me the word to come to you on the water, you know? And then when Jesus said, come, he recognized his voice. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. And when his voice imparts faith to you so you can do righteous works. Dead works is doing things in your own strength in the flesh. Living works, good works, is doing what the Spirit wants to do through obedience. Yeah, so those are some of the little things that you learn as you begin to walk with God. And the most powerful experience that I've ever, 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 ever had, the way God has used me, the most powerful, it wasn't slaying thousands of people down in the spirit or anything like that. The most powerful move that I've ever seen God move through me, ever, was when I gave someone a hug. 
<laughs> the hug of the Lord. <laughs> and he he's done it like about three or three three about three times through me. The first time I hugged a witch and the spirit of fear left me. I thought because <laughs> this witch was coming to curse the meeting. I turned around and hugged this person who I believe was a witch. Because everyone was telling me, and I could feel demons, and there was confusion and stuff. So I just decided, perfect love casts all fear out. You know, he's right. He said, you know, brother, we need to love more. So I turned around, and I, 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 he's right. He said the right thing. I turned around, I gave him a big hug, and I, I heard him go, oh, and something was released there. That perfect love cast out the fear out of me for getting cursed in a meeting, you know, because, you know, why am I worried about curses when I've been, you know, all the curses went upon Christ on the cross. I just need to walk in faith in his finished work. And uh, the second time that I, that I know of was in a, it was in a church meeting where God told me, he, uh, Jesus appeared to me and told me, like, you, I, you are my body and I want to use my body to hug that man. And he showed me in a vision who it is, and the substance was there, and the love was there. And as soon as I did it, like, man, I began bawling my eyes out. That love of Christ is beyond human understanding. And it wasn't, I felt it, like, for my own life, but to feel it flood, flood through your heart, through your entire being, to have Jesus Christ, the living God, flood through your heart and your words and your 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 flesh your soul your being and hit somebody else to heal them of delusion there's nothing like that and it all came through just a hug and he wanted to hug that person and that was the most important powerful release that I've ever experienced in my entire life through me like through my heart my mind my body my soul it's in my testimony when I saw God 333 or something like that you could check it in the or maybe it's a different yeah I didn't go into that one too deep but what is all this stuff what are you talking about Chris faith is the substance of things hoped for if you go back to Galatians 2.20 it's no longer I that lives but Christ lives in me and the life that I live in the flesh I live by the faith there it is, the substance.